Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. What a time we're going through. This is just, I, I don't have words. I don't have words to talk about this time. Firstly, my apologies for not posting for a very long time. I've had a few messages from some of you, some of you wondering where I've been, what's going on, are you okay? I am okay. Uh, I am currently in Sydney, Australia. I came back to my mum's place. This was um, sort of, gosh, when was this? March the 6th, I think I got here. Uh, I'll get into that story in a moment, but <laughs> what I wanted to start this video with was um, just to check in, just to say hi. I'm going to do a meditation. I've... I've been putting some notes down. I did a bit of reading this morning. Uh, I haven't done any work for a while because I've been dealing with some health stuff on my own, which is not viral. But I'll tell, tell you about that in a moment. But I, um, I wanted to say, I mean, I wanted to start just by talking about this time that we're going through. And without question, this is completely unprecedented, extraordinary. We are living um, an extraordinary time in history that is touching each and every single one of us. We are all making history. We are all history in the making. It's incredible. And, you know, I was thinking about, did anyone predict it astrologically, right? We're in the business of predicting here. We should be able to predict these things. I was thinking about my own work and my own videos that I've made. If you look at my um, Saturn in Capricorn video, you'll see that that's actually not bad um, for predicting elements of this time. I think I did predict that, you know, Saturn moving into Capricorn, it, it's Earth, it's money, it's, um, there's going to be limitations on money. There's going to be, you know, and I think I said something about we won't have a stock market crash as such, which we've pretty much had uh, I mean and God knows what's coming now but um, I said that there'd be redundancies there'd be things shutting down uh, I did talk about that I did see that I'm, I'm pretty conservative in my outlook videos I tend not to um, you know make make too much of a big deal or drama because you know I, I, yeah I'm, I'm pretty conservative in, in what I say um, but uh, you know uh, there are some astrologers who and I'm I'm kind of like you are probably I'm kind of going back to some of the astrologers that I follow and I'm watching some of their old content for you know November December and the 2020 outlook my mum watched one that was a Western astrology um, podcast where one of the guys there said that March is going to be a meat grinder month. So we're trying to find him. We're actually going back through some of the videos that she watched and we're, we're going to try and find, because that's a pretty accurate prediction right there. I have been watching uh, some of the Western astrologers. I watch all the astrologers, you know, during this time of lockdown and self-isolation and all this and that. I've, I've definitely been um, catching up on my YouTube content. And I heard one of the prolific uh, Western astrologers talking about all these planets. And we're talking kind of Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, hanging out there with Pluto. And I never talk about the outer planets but this episode is making me want to talk about the outer planets. Um, if, uh, and I've had a quick look on my, I've got my system open now. And uh, let's have a look here. And I haven't done hardly any astrology work for a long time. So I miss it. I love this work so much and I haven't done any of it. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you what, what I've been doing. I'll catch you up on my news in a moment before we do the meditation. But um, I've got my software open and I'm having a look at the planets. And yes, I mean, we've got a lot of planets hanging out here with Pluto. And Pluto, as I remember from when I was studying Western astrology, I mean, he's the planet of extremes. And, you know, he can cause 
extremely bad times. You can cause extreme wealth, though, as well. You know, there's amazing things uh, Pluto can do. And as I click through on my software, which is Sidereal Vedic, you know, if I click up, and we're looking at when is this time going to end, uh, I'm going to say that these planets will lift and shift from Pluto. We're kind of looking at this December, like sort of January, Feb next year. Things start to lift and shift and go away from Pluto. They're not all hanging out with Pluto. So, yeah, I, I think this is quite a long term thing. And I'm kind of basing that on some of the news headlines as well. We've got um, here in Australia, you know, I, I heard on the news just this morning, they said six months, right? We, we, you know, we've shut everything down. It's probably going to be quite shut down for six months. I, that sounds pretty practical to me. And I saw a headline, I scanned through a headline. I didn't even click on the article, but it said something about the United Kingdom is going to be out of action for 12 months. So... With all of that information in mind and looking at Pluto for the first time, which I haven't done on this channel, I don't bring up the outer planets, but I've got them switched on on my software right now. And uh, yes, I think, you know, it, it might well be that kind of Jan, Feb of, of next year is when we're going to start to see change, relief, you know, exactly what that's going to look like. I don't know. Uh, but hopefully I'm going to be able to get back into my astrology work and doing my videos and doing all my stuff um, once I've sorted out my health issue. Now, I've had a few of you ask me how I am, so I am going to tell you. I'm going to catch you up on my news, so what's been happening with me personally. Uh, so basically, I and I think in my last video I just told you guys I have a health challenge and I'm dealing with it. And uh, after having caught up with you know um, especially my mum and, and going through the family history and all that kind of thing we do get these cysts um, in our family so it's, it's something yeah that I have right now I'm healing a cyst basically um, and I figure I might as well tell you because you know some of you might be worried that oh god does she have a virus what has she got like no it's not a virus it's none of that I you know I was quiet about this earlier because I wasn't quite sure what it was but now through doing my own research and through kind of taking charge of my health, um, you know, I'm pretty confident this is a cyst and this is something that will heal naturally within three to six months. As long as I be really healthy, I do my breathing exercises. I've been doing the Ram Dev Ji um, breathing recommendation. He says that Kapalapati breathing is the thing to do. He says um, do half an hour of it every day. Uh, I'm building up to, I don't know if I'll get to half an hour because I think that's a bit full on, but um, I'm certainly doing 10 minutes of it every day. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's um, what an extraordinary time. He says that also to heal this kind of thing, he says it takes three to six months to heal it naturally. Um, he says, you know, take fresh turmeric tea first thing every morning, which I am doing with the cracked black pepper. I include the cracked black pepper because that helps for rapid absorption of the turmeric. So that is really amazing. I'm, I'm doing that. Um, I'm obviously eating fresh, you know, veggies, food, everything, non, not processed. So I'm doing all the right things. And, um, and you know, I, I found this, uh, I think it was kind of mid-Feb, I've been dealing with it. And then when I saw that Italy was on shutdown, lockdown, I thought, hmm, I better get on a plane and go home to Australia um, because I thought it's just going to be a matter of time before they shut down the United Kingdom. And so when I left, I think I left sort of 3rd March, things weren't too bad back then. And I remember, you know, people were still in London walking around. Uh, nobody really was worried about it but I was certainly worried about it I knew that it would just be a matter of time before everything shuts down so I um, yeah got myself on a plane I stayed one night in Singapore which was surreal I can tell you 
that was fascinating by the way we've got some really noisy birds in the garden i hope that that's a nice sound in the background and not distracting um but yeah back to singapore so what was that like oh gosh that was just weird um got to the hotel where i normally always stay and which is normally always full normally always really really busy and it was completely deserted there it was about 10 percent full i was one of the few handful of people who were staying in a very tall building that has a lot of space um and there was like just a guy standing out the front of the hotel with a mask and he had that one of those laser pointer um thermometer things and he you know checks your temperature and, and he said that every time you come in and out of this building i'm gonna have to check you and i'm like yes that's great i'm very happy about that i only went in there once and then i didn't come out and the next time i came out i just went straight to the airport and um and yeah and then i flew back here to sydney australia and i've um, been keeping up with the news obviously uh, one of the things i said in the saturn capricorn video was i said that leadership is going to be tested and my goodness leadership is being tested big time that was one of the things that i thought about before making that saturn in capricorn video i um i thought a lot about the 10 percent so the top 10 percent or the top five percent the, the people like george soros who use paintbrushes uh, use banks as a paintbrush right like for the rest of us a bank is, is a big deal and it's a big institution and you know uh, we hope to put money in there but he uses those things as creative tools you know um, and I remember when I was contemplating all this for the Saturn and Capricorn video I was thinking about how those people are really going to be tested and I tell you what I think that's what this time is all about I think Saturn is cleaning up his house he Saturn hasn't been home for 30 years he's come in and he's seen a lot of corruption he's seen a lot of problems and he's like right we got to clean this up and because he's sorting out the top 10 percent um it's having an impact on every single one of us so you know that's another thing I wanted to say that yeah I've been looking at a lot of the theories ar around what this is and yes there are a lot of conspiracy theories I've been watching those which I, I love to watch all that kind of thing I think it's quite fun um, you know I hold all those stories loosely and lightly but I having consumed all of that content uh, I definitely think that the virus is is very very real um, you know because I know that there are theories about okay it's a bioweapon or it's 5g that they're testing and that's why you know there's all kinds of theories but what i know is that this thing is absolutely real and there is a saturn in capricorn feel to all of this um because it's earth you know it's earth it's the other thing is i was looking at the contradictions the sort of ironies about what's happening here or the sort of like you know in our isolation we're all becoming one do you know what i mean like that's so fascinating what else was um a saturnian thing because saturn i mean look at this saturn creates a material world right yet saturn is air you know all these kind of opposites these extreme opposites at play um oh it's just so fascinating so yeah so guys I, I just thought i'd come on here and and do a quick new moon meditation how are we doing for time sorry i'm a bit scattered i'm a bit, okay 13 minutes it's a bit of an intro but i wanted to catch you up with my news i wanted to let you know that i'm fine and the, the other thing i want to say is that um this is a time where i really really wish i was working do you know what I mean? Because and I've had a few of you get in touch and say that you need support and things like that. And I, oh, yeah, gosh, I wish I was working, I tell you. And, but, you know, God has given me this, this health challenge to work on. And I think it's very deliberate. This, uh, you know, divine has given me something health wise to work on because divine is saying to me, go within, work on yourself, so I'm not allowed to work, basically, because I have to sort out this health thing. Because even when I sit and I type a text message to a friend, um, I get a bit exhausted. And, uh, and I know I'm going to be a little bit exhausted after I finish this. Um, so, 
Yeah, it's, it's, gosh, it's a weird time. There, and there are so many things I wanted to tell you, but, well, like one of them was about, I guess, to give you an example of how I'm dealing with this, to say, um, to say that always look for the positive. So what do I mean by that? And I, I thought I'd use my example as an example because I've had a few of you get in touch and tell me and please do please do you know on the comments and tell me what's going on and if I can write a comment back I certainly will I think I'll be able to write comments um that should be fine if I don't know that I'm probably recuperating or recovering or but I will get to everybody I will get to you know even if it's two three months from now I will get to you um so feel free to express yourself on any of my videos and uh, anywhere you want. Definitely comment on the videos, emails I'm not really responding to or, or dealing with. And I've taken the website down. And I do think it's going to be two or three months before I'm back online. But I mean, this is a time I would just love to be working. But what, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, so I've got this cyst. I'm going to jump around a lot today. <laughs> uh, no notes, just straight out of my head. It's messy. Um yeah, I was thinking about how like, we've always got to draw the positive out. We've always got to find the positive. So one of the things that I had a thought about was that, gosh, you know, this is the one time where I could kind of do with seeing a doctor or, you know, sometimes people get minor surgery done to have these things sorted out. And you know, this is the kind of time it'd be nice to see a doctor, maybe use a hospital. And I haven't, I haven't done either of those for many, many years. And the one time I need to, it's all out of action kind of thing. And it's all being used for other higher priority things which I totally understand but I could feel quite negative about that I could feel really down about that but how I'm handling it is I'm looking at this and I've thought a lot about this that why have I got this at this time and one of the thoughts I've come to that's brought me a lot of relief and a lot of peace and a lot of goodness is I've seen this as wow the divine is protecting me the divine wants has given me a health challenge to keep me at home to keep me occupied because if I'd have had this three to six month health challenge at any other time I'd feel really bad because everyone will be working doing stuff and I'm out of action so the divine has given me this at a time when the world is kind of out of action the divine has trusted me with this because I've done so much reading of Louise Hay, Anita Morjani, all these people that have healed their own like they've healed major, major stuff naturally on their own, right? Louise Hay, right? She should have gone and had surgery probably to have her cancer removed, but she said, no, leave it with me. I'm going to go home and I'm going to heal this naturally. Now, how amazing, right? I've always admired her and I feel like the divine or God or whatever has said, okay, you've always admired her. Now you get to be her. You know what I mean? So I wanted to share that with you to say that this is how I'm dealing with my mindset. Mindset wise, I could get really down, I could get be, feel really bad. But I mean, with all the self development work and spiritual work and, and all of that kind of thing that I've been doing really since 2006, uh, I've got too many tools now to, um, to get down about stuff. But it's not like I don't. It's not like I don't get down. It's not like I'm not afraid of this thing. That's the other thing I wanted to say to you guys as well. Hey, I'm afraid of this thing. I don't want to catch it. You know, um, I'm obeying all the rules and I'm glad to do that. And I don't want to spread it. I don't want to, certainly don't want to get it. don't want to give it either equally, uh, you know. So I think one of the things, it, it, I think it, there is such a thing as healthy fear and I think, um, there's nothing wrong with being afraid, you know. And I thought, yeah, if I share that, hey, I'm afraid, I hope that that relaxes some of you out there that you think, well, yeah, I am too. I think it's important um, psychologically to, to be in touch with our feelings at this time. And that's, I think that's where people are going to struggle. That's where people, are, if you're a person who doesn't like to feel your feelings, then you're going to find this time really hard. And um, I think there's a huge, huge psychological impact that is not even being considered or talked about right now, simply because the physical, look at that, Saturn in Capricorn, Earth, right, physical, this is all very physical, what's going on here. Um, and perhaps I think it'll be when Saturn moves into Aquarius, maybe that we really get to um, 
handle and deal with the psychological impact of this time because I think it's it's absolutely huge and because everybody's focused on the immediate um, very practical matters that's not even being addressed or looked at you know I think about the teenagers who have been told that you know one year of your life sorry well you're gonna have to delay graduation and this and that oh I just think god that must be so tough um you know there are there are a lot of uh sections of the community that yeah I mean I've, I've definitely been thinking about all kinds of different people in all kinds of different situations and what the impact is it's 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 utterly epic it's it's extraordinary and I mean we and that's why you know we I know we're going to need all light workers and coaches and astrologers and everybody we're going to need all hands on deck we're all going to need to help each other and that's why I'm kind of um a bit a bit annoyed that I'm not able to work but uh, but I will be back working and, and know that um and I've had some of you come on and say that you know I had a lovely lovely lady to say that she lost her job um, this was yesterday and, and you've really I wanted to thank you actually because let me try and find your comment it was so wonderful because you were my coach you were like oh I'd love to have a um, meditation from you you know where are you hello and you were you were so sweet and let me bring up your message it's Nidhi. yeah thank you thank you so so much um, yeah you've written Please find time to suggest a meditation for this new moon. Uh, I need something to hold on to to tide over this period. And you've written this wonderful compliment. Thank you so much. This just filled me with so much, um, so much good feeling. You said, especially your soothing voice and genuine heartfelt connection for the world is fantastic upliftment for our souls. Wow. I mean, thank you. And and so that your comment has really made me sit down today and pick up my books and and um which I love you know I've, I've had to abandon it all because of this health thing because every time I do work I start to feel pain I start to feel down so I, I don't know I'm being given a very clear signal but I'm I've got energy to do this now so that's great um I have so much to say guys I just like I feel like oh, I haven't spoken to you for so long and I I miss all of you but how about I get into this meditation, right? I've probably waffled for far too long. Already 22 minutes. I'll put a timestamp so that you can just skip ahead to the to the meditation. But I thought I'd just check in because it's been a while and I wanted to update you with where I'm at. Um, and also the other thing I want to say is know that, yeah, I'm out of action for this time. But when I come back, oh, I'm going to have so much content and it's going to... I'm learning so much. Oh my gosh, I am learning so much. So I, I feel like I've got a heap of stuff to share and give you as a result of this time. Uh, you know, and, and we're going to flourish when we come out. Let me tell you, we are going to grow. You know, people who are spiritually inclined, this is our time. This is our time to, to go deep. And get even spiritually richer than we already are you know and and we're already on a lot of stuff on top of it you know and that that's why i was looking at the psychological impact because you know since 2006 i've been going to workshops and dealing with my emotions and doing this and doing that so i feel quite on top of emotions and all that but imagine if if you've been spending your whole life running away from from uh, from your feelings you know and you're gonna have to be at home now it's gonna it's gonna be interesting for some people right well okay let's um how about we get into this Uttrabhadrapada new moon i'm pretty sure it's a new moon please tell me <laughs> thank you alex last time i don't know if you're listening but thank you anyway for pointing out last time i think i said full moon new moon i was so back then i was in quite a lot of pain and i was <laughs> making that video oh I'm not in nearly as much pain. I've healed a lot, I must say. Uh, this What I've got is healing, so I'm confident. I'm confident I can do it on my own. Uh, right, let's do this. Let's do an Uttrabhadrapada meditation. Some of my books, I've, so when I packed my bag to come to Sydney, I, I, you know, I took a suitcase and half of it was filled with astrology books. 
half of it tech equipment and the other half was filled with like this pillow that I really need for my neck and like I brought a few clothes so I've just been going through my books and I'm like oh, I could really do with a bit of Robert's Pavoda here I've only got one of his books here there's a handful of books that are on my shelf in London but I've looked at um, I've looked at Victor Cara and Camilla Sutton for the Nakshatra info and I'm going with Victor Cara's info this time because he's got this wonderful thing about the water dragon for Uttra Bhadra Pada. So I'm going to bring a water dragon into the meditation. I don't know how. Uh, I've got some of the meditation written. Some of it I just wrote down and some of it will be constructed on the fly. So that's how I'm doing this today. I'm not going to have any music, just the meditation. Just, um, yeah, just you know, I'll, I'll do as I did last time and let's see how we go. Let's see where we go. Not even I know. I know that we're going to meet a water dragon and I've written down some of the things he's going to say, but that's as much as I know. I don't know where we're going on this occasion, but I'm going to find out as you are going to find out. So wherever you are on the world, I hope you are doing well I hope you're peaceful I hope you're safe I hope you are you know and is it self-isolating or is it self-nurturing how about we change that how about we change it to self-nurturing because quite frankly I like the concept of self-nurturing and that's what I've been doing I've been doing a lot of that and we are all going to come out renewed right and we're lucky that we're spiritual people we're lucky that I'm very confident the majority of base of my subscribers were all spiritual, we're all introverts, we're all a bit hermit-like anyway, so, you know, we're going to be fine, aren't we? We're just, we're just going to do what we do, and we're going to come out just okay, we, we're going to come out better, you know, and we're going to come out singing. I think we're going to come out having found freedom. That is the real potential that we have, each one of us, in front of us now. If you look at the work of Lester Levinson, I have been consuming his work like in everything I can find on him on YouTube. I'm consuming it. Lester Levinson and David Hawkins, these are my spiritual guides for this time. And um, I've been reading, so I've read David Hawkins' Power Versus Force. I'm currently halfway through Letting Go. Absolutely brilliant. The Pathway of Surrender. This is the time of mastery. This is the time we can master surrender. This is the time we can find freedom. Lester Levinson says within a few weeks to a few months, you can have total freedom. We can come out of this time. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was um, David Hawkins explains that the, f- I think it's both David Hawkins and Lester Levinson, both of them explain that the last fear that you have to deal with is the fear of death. Once you conquered that one, you've done fear and it's not going to bother you anymore. Right? That is the true potential of this time. We can do this. We can come out of this time totally free. That is the, and I mean, what could be more amazing? What could be, um, what could be more incredible? So with that thought in mind, and some of that's going to come through in the meditation, I want you to find a place where you can relax. Close your eyes. Settle in and we're going to go on a journey. We're going to go on a new moon journey. This is a new moon in Uttarabhadrapada. And as you relax, I just want you to feel any tension in your body is starting to unwind, is starting to dissolve, starting to vanish. There's no need for tension of any kind.
is I'll mind the time. And I'll, I'll tell you when it's time to come back. Now as you relax, feel the tension release from your head. Feel the tension release from your eyebrows. Relax those eyebrows completely. Relax any tension in your scalp and around your ears. Feel your cheek muscles and jaw loosen up. All of that area, just relax. Really gonna relax all around the head and the skull. Just let go. Now at the base of your skull, the top of your neck, release all of the tension up there. We're really gonna relax this head area. And your neck, just let everything go. And we're going to go down the neck. And in gentle waves, start to feel your whole body relax from your shoulders down to your toes. Just keep visualizing or feeling the sensation of waves relaxing from your shoulders to your toes shoulders to toes shoulders to toes relax 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 get in touch with your breathing breathe in deeply and hold for a little while. And then I want you to exhale everything and do it slowly, do it gradually. Make a really nice, long, deep exhale. Make that longer than your inhale was, okay? And we're gonna do it again. I'll do it with you this time. So we're going to breathe deeply in. Hold for a little while. And then we're going to have a long exhale. I'm going to do that one more time. When you're ready, breathe deeply in. Hold. And we're going to let it all out. Just breathe naturally. Just observe your body regain its natural breathing. It'll do it on its own. And just enjoy the sensation of you being breathed, okay? You're being breathed by the body. It knows what to do. Your body knows how to heal. Your body knows how to breathe. It does it all on its own. If you can tune into your heartbeat, and feel that if you can get so still that you feel your own heartbeat, beautiful. Do that. All right, and in a very gentle way, I'm going to get you to crank up your imagination because we're going to go somewhere. And not even I know where we're going, but I'm going to find out. 
And this is all in relation to the reading I did for Uttra Bhadrapada, Nakshatra. So, like last time, we are going to have our energetic body, our, maybe it's our astral selves. Just picture yourself. You're calling a cloud down from the heavens. And you're clambering onto this beautiful, beautiful cloud. And we know that scientifically clouds are just water, but this is an actual fluffy, comfortable cloud. So just picture something fluffy and comfy. Get on that cloud. And this cloud has picked us up and it's now going to take you very swiftly and very quickly to a new planet. Last time we went to a different planet, but this time we're, we're being dropped off somewhere quite different. We're being dropped off to a clearing in this magical wood. And it's sunset time. The sky is kind of pink. It's a bit purple. It's kind of twilight sort of time and you've just been dropped off in this clearing in the wood. And all around you, there are these really tall, magnificent trees. They're kind of like pine trees. And as you breathe in, you can smell that evergreen smell. It's green, it's leafy, it's, the air is just full of this natural green smell. And it's kind of like a rainforest you know when you've if you've been in a rainforest when it rains it's got that fresh it's like the oils have been released from the leaves and there are other kind of trees there are other kind of rainforesty type trees it's it's just beautiful it's very green it's very lush and you're in this kind of giant circular clearing and there's all this grass cloud is just left and you can see a pathway. <clears throat> and this pathway is directly in front of you. And it's a short pathway. And you can see that it turns into sand about halfway through. And in front, you can see, it's extraordinary. There's a clearing, there's a pathway. And you can see that there's a beach. So we're going to another beach. So you've got a sense okay it's I need to walk down that pathway so you walk down you're walking through and you get to the sandy part and you emerge onto this beautiful beach and this beautiful beach has the most glorious golden sand. And you can see the sun sinking below the horizon, the waves. You've got the beach there, the golden beach, you've got the waves, and the sun is sinking, sinking down. Looks like the, the ocean is consuming the sun. It's an absolutely magnificent sight. And as you watch the sun slip behind the ocean, you move closer to where the water is lapping up on the shore. And you notice that these are very gentle waves, very small, tiny waves. Small ripples just keep lapping up gently. And you feel so relaxed. And while you're on this planet, your thoughts go to the earth. And you think about Mother Earth. You think about where you've just come from. 
And you feel a bit of a pang in your heart. You feel that my planet is suffering. But inside you know that you're here on this planet to find some answers. You know that you're going to come away with a a fresh new understanding. And while you think about Earth, you know that on Earth we're going to have a new moon in Uttra Bhadrapada Nakshatra. And as you reflect on this, and because you're a good student of astrology, you know that this nakshatra is symbolized by the water dragon. And some say it's a water snake, but some say it's a water dragon. What you know is that no one really knows because no one's ever seen the water dragon. And as you gaze at the ocean in front of you, you're starting to connect the dots. You're seeing that, all right, I'm thinking about Uttra Bhadrapada. I'm thinking about a water dragon. I'm standing in front of a cosmic ocean. There's got to be some connection here. And as your mind stitches together these thoughts, your intuition wakes up. And you get a sense that something's trying to talk to you. And this time, it's not the ocean. This time it's a being. And you can hear the voice of this being loud and clear. Something stirs in that ocean. And inside your mind, you hear the water dragon speak. And you know it's the water dragon. Because he says, I am the water dragon. And he has a lovely voice. He has a a rich, manly sort of voice. And he says, this is an incredibly deep and rich spiritual time you are in. And as you reflect on that, you know that it's true. And you know that he's referring to the earth and you know that he's talking about the earth because you were just thinking about the earth. You just felt that pang in your heart. He goes on to address this. He says, those who navigate this time well will prosper later. He says, you're wondering how to make the most of it, aren't you? Well... I will give you some pointers. And he goes on. He says, be like water at this time. Water flows, water takes the shape of whatever container it's in. Water can be still and water moves with ease. It cleans, it clears, it smooths, it softens. Bringing renewal in its wake, water purifies without discrimination. Recognize that this is a deeply rich and rewarding time spiritually. He goes on to say, retreat into silence. Be on your own. See if you can hear the gentle voice of your own intuition. It will guide your every step from telling you what to eat in the morning to how you should arrange your resources and living arrangements at this time. Reflect on your priorities. 
Look at what preoccupied your mind a few months ago and look at what matters now. Make your life about love. Forgive old hurts. Let go of feelings that don't serve you. Create new visions for how your life can be once this time is done. He goes on. He says, crisis serves us. How, you ask? How does it serve us? Well, he says, it clears away what isn't working. It shows us where our ego was running the show. It makes us see what is truly important to us. Crisis has a quick way of showing what really matters and what really doesn't. It will sharpen and focus all your future efforts. Once this time is over, you can go forth and create a life that truly fulfills you. Now is the time to make a bid for freedom. Freedom, you ask. But I'm in lockdown, you say. How can there be freedom? And the dragon goes on. He says, yes, freedom. Freedom from the world out there. No job can make you happy. No person can make you happy. Not even a completely healthy physical state can keep you 100% contented all of the time. You are being asked to find all your joy and love from deep within. If you can achieve this, then you are truly free of the world out there. You will be an independent being. You will radiate joy and love constantly. You'll spread happiness in the world and you will leave this earth having done your life's work, which is to give who you uniquely are to the rest of us. Because if there's one thing this time has come to teach us. It is that we are all one. We're all connected, regardless of isolation. In fact, it's through isolating that we'll discover how true our connection is. And if you are still incarnated on Earth, it means the one energy that we all are hasn't had the privilege or honor of getting to know your uniqueness. Which is why you must share it. Which you will. And as you stand there reflecting on the words of the dragon, you know that he speaks the truth. Everything makes sense. And you're amazed that in this state, worry and fear and doubt and all that just doesn't exist. You feel a knowingness. You feel the purpose behind everything. That everything has purpose. Everything has meaning. Everything is a teacher. And that you can learn from everything. And you just wish that everybody could be in this state. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that you are in that state. What matters is that you can frequently be in a state where it's all okay. In a deep way, it's all very okay. But the dragon hasn't finished with you. Because it's a new moon. He wants something from you. He wants you to plant a seed. And you get this intuitive knowing. He's communicating with you. He's saying, go into the forest there and find yourself a little seed. It can be anything. It can be a little tiny pine cone, it can be a, a little dot, it can be a little rock, 
can be anything. You go into that forest. It's not far. Go and pick up a seed of some kind. Now, you can forage around. Perhaps it's a little pebble for you. Perhaps it's a, as I say, a little pine cone, a little bud, anything. Find something. Now pick it up. And the dragon is intuitively communicating with you. He's saying, come to the shore and visualize your life. One year to 1.5 years from now. What do you want to start creating? What do you want? Visualize, and you, you can visualize what you, life, you want your life to be like five years from now. Just in the future, how, how do you want it? What do you want? Now that you know that this crisis is happening on earth, now's the time to build a vision of, of what you want. And it, it might not be what you wanted a year ago. It might be something new. You might want new things now. You might want a sustainable life. You might want a house and a garden. You might want to leave the city. You might want to move country. You might want to change jobs. Right? Start visualizing that dream life. And it's probably going to be a sustainable, eco-friendly life of some kind. Right? So visualize that. How do you want your life to change? And as you visualize that, the dragon is putting those visualizations into that seed that's in your hand. Because the dragon has extraordinary magical abilities. He is taking those visualizations, he's putting it in the seed. And now he's asking you to throw that seed into the ocean because he wants to catch it. And inside your mind you think, well, I, can't, I can't throw this so that it lands in the ocean so that you can catch it. This thing is tiny. How am I going to get this to you? And he says, don't worry, just throw. You'll see. I'm going to suck that seed in. You see, I'll get it, I'll get it. Don't worry. You think too much. <laughs> so you go, okay, all right, I'll throw this little seed. And you pull your arm back and you throw, the biggest throw you can. And you watch with wonder as this dragon-like creature emerges from the ocean. There's waves everywhere. You have to stand back. There's, it's kind of chaos. It's a bit full on because he's coming from deep in the cosmos to collect your seed. But he does get that seed into his mouth. It's extraordinary. He's got some powers. It manages to fly. Seed manages to fly into the middle of the ocean where he is. And in an extraordinary burst of energy, he takes the seed and he disappears. So you still don't know, is he a dragon or a snake? You don't know that. But what you know is that that seed is going to start to manifest within about a year to a year and a half. there's going to be growth. You're going to start to see changes in your life. And you're going to start to create the life that fulfills you. And nothing less. Nothing less. Right? Go for what you want now. The dragon is communicating with you. Go, go for it. Go for what you want. I've got your seed. Just watch. Watch the magic unfold. Trust. Believe. Have faith. And you know it's time to leave. You breathe in deeply. 
the cloud arrives and as you settle onto that cloud you exhale deeply and you can feel yourself start to come back into your body start to feel the sensation in your body you can wiggle your toes a little bit you can wiggle your fingers start to feel your body wake up and come back online and anytime you like you can wake up and come back into the room or you can continue into silence you can continue sleeping if this has put you to sleep that's a good outcome I want to thank you so much for tuning in I want to thank you so much for your love and support I want to thank you for being the best viewers and community that a YouTuber could possibly ask for thank you I'm just so so happy to be connected to every single one of you and I'm going to try and keep in touch I'm going to try and keep doing these meditations but please know the only reason I wouldn't be is because I'm too sick um, otherwise I love making all this content I love doing it so much right take care everybody stay safe and I look forward to seeing you next time.